स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Let's do another problem. So here's a problem again on uh, Silo theorems. Uh, find all the two Silo subgroups of the symmetric groups. Find all the two Silo subgroups of the symmetric groups S4. S5 and S6. Okay, so these are the the so in each case I want you to try and find the what are all the two silo subgroups, what they look like explicitly in terms of permutations. Okay, so again uh, please do try this on your own. Um, let me work out the solution for you. So let's do S4 first. So let's take the group S4. Its cardinality is 24. Cardinality of S4 is 24 which is uh, 4 into um, sorry 4 into 6 so that's 8 into 3 should write this as 2 cubed into 3 power 1. So the the subgroup that we are looking for the 2 silo subgroup is a subgroup of cardinality 8 in this case. Okay? So I am trying to find uh, the let h be a 2 silo subgroup h be a 2 silo subgroup. The cardinality of H is 8. Okay, let us try and find a, a subgroup whose uh, cardinality is 8 in this case. Now there are some obvious things we can start with. So let us first do, so I am looking at all permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. So for instance, here is the here is one possibility. I take the identity, let me call the identity as E now and the transposition 1, 2. So this is a subgroup, it is got cardinality 2 rather than 2 cubed okay, because 1, 2 this is a transposition square is identity. Uh, Let us look at another E 3, 4 again a, a subgroup of cardinality 2. So let me give these, these elements names A and B these transpositions 1, 2 and 3, 4. So observe they are both uh, elements of order 2 and further since they are sort of disjoint uh, they commute with each other AB and BA are actually equal to each other and their product is nothing but this 1, 2, 3, 4 again an element of order 2. Okay. Uh, so what we can do next is to so I am sort of trying to get to this cardinality 8 by looking at other possible powers of 2 as starting points. So I have constructed subgroups of cardinality 2 now. Using these two, we can construct a subgroup whose cardinality is 4. Uh, How is that? Well, actually in this case, we can just look at the subgroup generated by, by their union if you wish. So let us put A, B uh, together. I mean, we want a subgroup which contains H1 and H2. So that is a subgroup generated by them. And because of these, these relations here, uh, all I need to do is just look at the subgroup whose elements are E, A, B and AB. I do not need to include any further elements. This is the smallest subgroup which contains both H1 and H2. Okay? This is a subgroup. This is like the Klein 4 group if you wish, a copy of um, a, a cyclic group of cardinality 2 with itself. Uh, so, this guy is again a subgroup, but its cardinality is only 4 subgroup of cardinality 4 and what we really want to do is to go one further level up. We want to double this further in some way. Okay, now, uh, in order to get to order 8, here is my, here is the element. So, that will do the trick for us. So, let me tell you what it is first and then we will see why it does the job. So, uh, consider the element 1, 3, 2, 4. 
okay it's not not the one i wrote here that's this guy is 1 2 3 4 i am looking at the product 1 3 times 2 4 okay this is an element of s4 so let's let's define this element observe that uh, what are the properties of c firstly it's it's an order 2 element that's okay uh, unlike this 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 other element 1 2 3 4 this element c does not commute with a and b okay so in fact if you if you sort of conjugate so if you look at what is ca c inverse uh, which is if you remember how conjugation works in um, symmetric groups all you have to do is to replace so take a which in this case is 1 2 and you just replace 1 and 2 by the numbers th that they map to under the transformation under the permutation c okay so in this case 1 maps to 3 2 maps to 4 so C A C inverse will just be uh, 1 maps to 3, 2 maps to 4. So this is going to become the permutation 3, 4, which is exactly B. Okay? By a similar token, C B C inverse will just be 3 maps to 1, 4 maps to 2. This will just become 1, 2. That's A. Okay. So that's uh, so in particular, it tells you that uh, C doesn't commute with A and B because C A C inverse is not A, it is in fact B in this case. Okay, so, we have, we have sort of thrown in this additional element. Now, let us see what we have to, what we get if we also include this element. Um, so, let me now take the subgroup I generated already. To that, I will add in this additional element C and now take the subgroup generated by this, this collection. So, in other words, I am trying to look for if you wish the subgroup which is really generated by the set A, B and C. So, I have three elements whose um, order is 2 and if I just take the first two guys, I know it gives me what I called H3. Now, I also want to throw in this additional element C and ask what that gives me. Okay. So, now if you, if you look at, uh, so what do we need to do? Once I throw in an additional element, I must try and multiply it with what I already have and see if what new elements arise. So, let me take C and I will multiply it with A. Uh, I will multiply C with B. I will also multiply C with AB. And let us compute in each case uh, what one gets. So, let me write out the answers for you. This is 1, 4, 2, 3, the 4 cycle that is what you get if you compute C into A. Okay. So, let me just uh, verify that uh, then I leave the rest for you to check. So, what does C into A mean? How does one compute products of permutations? So, first I uh, this is supposed to be the composition of the two maps A and C. Okay. So, let me write out this A here is C which is again 1, 2, 3, 4. So, what does uh, the, the map A do. So, C A is supposed to be thought of as the compositions of C with A and uh, composition of bijections. So, permutation is a bijection here. So, recall what was A? A maps 1 to 2 and 2 to 1. Okay, it maps these two to themselves. That was what A does. That is what A did. And now, what is C? C maps 1 to 3, 3 to 1. Uh, it maps 2 to 4 and 4 to 2. Right? Uh, let us go back and see what C does. C was 1, 3, 2, 4. So, it maps 1 and 3, it swaps them, it swaps 2 and 4. Okay? So, that is what this is. 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 2 and 4 go to each other. So, now I have to compose these two maps and ask what the full composition looks like. Okay? So, let us see, let us uh, chase the, the arrows. So, what does 1 map to under this? 1 goes to 4. Okay, so, that is what you see here 1 goes to 4. Now, where does 4 go to? 4 goes to 2. So, that is 4 goes to 2. Now, so I have figured this out, I have figured this out. Let us see what 2 goes to. 2 maps to 1 which maps to 3. Okay, so, 2 goes to 3. And then finally, 3 goes to 3 goes to 1. So, 3 goes to 1. So, that is this, that is the cycle here. Okay, so, I, what I have done here is just written out the uh, the permutation in cycle notation. So, that is 1, 4, 2, 3. Now, uh, let us compute the other one C, B for example, it turns out to be well, 
uh, I mean you could do the same thing write it out like this but we could also use the various relations that we already know CB is the same as AC okay, because CBC inverse was A and what is AC well I know how to do CA if I know how to do CA then I know also how to do AC okay why is that because uh, AC is let us see it is C inverse A inverse the whole inverse okay so this is how inverses work right so I have to swap the order then take inverses but observe that A and C were oh, their squares were identity which means A and C are their own inverses so this is just CA whole inverse okay now I know what CA looks like and the inverse of a 4 cycle is just obtained by reading the cycle in the in the other order okay instead of clockwise you read it counterclockwise so in this case it is just I start with 1 but then I read it in the other order I sort of go first to 3 and then to 2 4 so that is 1 3 2 4 okay now similarly you have to compute CAB and let me just tell you the answer it turns out to be 1 4 2 3 okay so what have I done I, I have manufactured uh, when I multiplied everything by C and of course I should multiply C by the identity which just gives me C itself C was 1 3 2 4 okay so I get these elements and you can check that uh, if I just put all these eight elements together it is in fact a subgroup okay it is closed under multiplication so what is my subgroup H in this case H turns out to be the elements I have manufactured in this manner there is identity uh, there is 1 2 there is 3 4 1 2 3 4 and now there is the 4 new elements 1 3 2 4 Okay, so, I have manufactured these uh, these 8 elements and like I said you have to check exercise uh, well 2 exercises in fact check that H is a subgroup it is got cardinality 8 and if you stare really hard you will notice something interesting that this subgroup has well it is got this element whose, whose order is 4 ok. So, I have uh, another element of order 4 in fact if you notice that if I take this uh, uh, let us look at the cyclic subgroup generated by 1 4 2 3 that is just these 4 elements identity 1 4 2 3 this 1 2 3 4 and 1 3 2 4 ok. So, I have got this uh, subgroup cyclic subgroup of cardinality 4 and then all the other elements that remain are all uh, uh, elements you know whose square is identity they are all elements of order 2 okay and this should remind you of something that you know this looks very much like the dihedral group in some sense okay so that is the second exercise show that H is actually isomorphic to the dihedral group with 8 elements that is what we call D4 okay dihedral group with 8 elements okay, and you can you can pretty much see where it is coming from. Okay, so, interesting thing we have seen is that the, the silo uh, 2 silo subgroup of S4 is actually the, the, the uh, group you know it has got 8 elements and it is isomorphic to the dihedral group on, on 8 elements. Okay, uh, now, observe something else this subgroup H is not normal. Okay. So, now you know I, I so far I have um, constructed one two silo subgroup for you, but where are all the others? Okay. So, observe for a start that this subgroup H is not normal inside S4. So, observe note H is not normal. Why not? Well, because if what does normal mean for example I take the transposition 1 2 belongs to H if H were normal it will mean that every conjugate of 1 2 is also in H right. So, if H were to be normal uh, if H were normal that would mean that every conjugate every element of the form G 1 2 G inverse 
would also belong to H. But then we know what conjugation does, right? What does conjugation do? It will just map it to uh, every other transposition of this form. You know, all the other guys of the form Ij, these should also belong to H for all I not equal to J. Okay? I and J running between 1 and 4 in this case. So, every other possible transposition uh, would also live in, in H, but observe from our description of H that in fact, H only has two of these transpositions. It's got 1, 2 and it's got 3, 4. Okay? In fact, there are uh, how many in all? Well, there are actually 4 choose 2 transpositions, which is 6 transpositions uh, inside the, the group S4 and H only contains two of them. Okay, it does not contain the, the other transposition. So, H is not normal and in fact, uh, how do you get therefore, what it implies is that uh, there are more uh, silo subgroups. So, which means that there should be more, there exists uh, more two silo subgroups. Okay, how many are there? Uh, how many two silo subgroups are there? So, this means that there are more. There are other two silo subgroups as well. Okay, and the question is, uh, how many are there? Okay, so let's, as always, let's give that a name. So let M denote the number of. The, let this be the number of two silo subgroups of S4. Now, uh, recall from. Uh, last time's problem session, we sort of know how to compute this number by the orbit stabilizer theorem. Uh, this number, which is just the cardinality of the orbit under the conjugation action, this is the cardinality of the group divided by the cardinality of the stabilizer of any one two silo subgroup. Okay, here I I picked one, which is H, and I ask. Uh, how many elements are there in the stabilizer and recall the stabilizer of H under the conjugation action is exactly what we call the normalizer. So, all group elements such that G H G inverse is H okay, which we call the normalizer in this case uh, the group is S 4 here. And so, this means that in particular this tells us that this number m uh, must divide the cardinality of S4 because it is S4 divided by something. So, m has to divide the cardinality of S4. In other words, m must divide 24. Okay? And we also know by Silo theorem number 3 that m must be congruent to 1 modulo 2. Okay? So, this guy is by Silo theorem. Now, we have two facts about m that m is a divisor of 24 and m is an odd number. Okay, well, what does that mean? It's 3 or 1. Right? What are the, the odd divisors of 24? Uh, they can only be 1 or 3, but as we sort of did last time as well, m cannot be 1 because if m is 1 that will tell you that h is normal. Okay, so, this cannot happen, this is not possible uh, because h is known to be not normal. Right? We just uh, argued that h is not normal because it contains two transpositions, but not the other four. Okay, so, that tells you that M is actually 3, that there are exactly 3 uh, two silo subgroups. Okay? They are all of course, conjugates of each other, they are all isomorphic to each other as well as a consequence. So, they are all copies of the dihedral group if you wish. And uh, here is the, to finish up, uh, finish off, let me tell you how to get the other ones. Uh, let us take two of the other transpositions which are missing from H, which so are 1, 3 and 1, 4. Then, uh, look at the conjugation. So, H itself sigma H sigma inverse and tau H tau inverse. These are the three silo subgroups. These are the three, uh, three distinct three silo subgroups. 
sorry two silo subgroups of s4 okay so we have succeeded in determining what the uh, silo subgroups two silo subgroups of s4 look like okay but the problem also asked us to do the same thing for s5 and s6 so let's uh, go on so s5 uh, cardinality of s5 is well what's that it's 5 factorial so it's in fact the cardinality of s4 multiplied with an additional 5 right so in terms of uh, s4 remember was 2 cubed into 3 power 1 this was the cardinality of s4 all you're doing is sort of appending an additional prime to it which is the prime 5 in this case okay so what does that mean well uh, the two silo subgroup of s5 still has cardinality 8 okay the highest power of 2 in this case is still 2 cubed okay and uh, let me find one of them for you and leave the problem of finding all of them uh, for you to work out so here is an example how does one find a subgroup i need to find a subgroup of cardinality 8 so observe that in some sense we have already solved the problem right so observe s4 is actually a subgroup of s5 okay so because s4 is a subgroup of s5 uh, any subgroup of s4 is automatically a subgroup of s5 so inside s4 i had determined uh, i already had uh, you know my my three silo subgroup h and this guy has cardinality 8 this is this is the one we just did you know so this eight element subgroup is a silo subgroup of s4 but it's also a silo subgroup of s5 okay because the the power of 2 you are looking for is still the same so observe the same answer works h uh, the is also a two silo subgroup of s5 so i have given you one example of course like i said exercise find all of them how many are there and how what do they look like okay uh, let me move on to s6 now let's look at the group s6 uh, how does this behave well uh, uh, what do i have the cardinality now is the cardinality of s4 which is 4 factorial into 5 into a 6 so in other words the 6 remember is a 2 into 3 okay so i have cardinality of s4 but then uh, I have now increased my power of 2 by 1. Okay? So if I write this out fully, this is 2 power 4, 3 squared, 5 power 1. Okay? So now I am looking for a subgroup whose cardinality is 16 rather than 8. Okay, so how do I find a subgroup of cardinality 16 inside S6? That is now my, my question. right? So I want a K, let us call it subgroup of S6 whose cardinality is now 16 okay again a moment a moment's thought we we have solved the problem for s4 right so inside s4 we have determined a subgroup whose cardinality is 8 now what is s4 it's all permutations of 1 2 3 and 4 s6 is all permutations of 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 okay so i have two more elements now how do I construct a k is supposed to have twice the number of elements as, as h? Okay. So here's the here's the idea. So just look at these two additional numbers that we have. Uh, you know, we have the numbers 5 and 6 now when you go from S4 to S6. So let's also look at the the subgroup which uh, is just generated by that transposition 5, 6, the thing which just uh, permutes the two of them. Okay, so let's let's give this a name. Let's call this uh, k dash. So let's look at identity and five six. This is a subgroup whose cardinality is two. Okay. Now in addition, I already had the subgroup H, which I constructed in the first instance when I was looking for S four. I already have H in my hand. H has eight elements. K prime has two elements. Now, let me sort of smash them together and see what I get. So, let me define k to just be the subgroup uh, generated by h and k prime. 
okay and uh, again i leave this as an exercise because this in some sense k prime every element of k prime commutes with every element of h okay why because h only affects the first four numbers right it's all elements of h are all permutations of 1 2 3 and 4 whereas elements of k prime are permutations of the other numbers 5 and 6 so in some sense they don't interact with each other they act on disjoint uh, subsets of numbers so every element of h and every element of k prime actually commute with each other okay so if you if you take their union and look at the subgroup generated it's just going to be all you know all products all possible products of elements from h and k prime okay this is just going to be everything in h multiplied with elements of k prime and so this will have will turn out that this is exactly cardinality 16 okay so uh, cardinality of k turn out to be exactly 16 okay, and you can if you wish write out all the elements so what do the elements of this k look like uh, let me go back to the elements of h uh, here are the elements of H. So, K is nothing but the, the same elements of H union, the elements of H multiplied by the transposition 5, 6. Okay? So, I can write all these out. And then, I can also write out the, the ones with uh, 5, 6. So, let us do that. So, this is my H. So, let us copy H here and Let us go here. Uh, let me look at. Uh, so, what is k now? k is all these very same elements, union, these elements multiplied with 5, 6. So, 1, 2, 5, 6, and so on. So, you will get 16 elements when you do this. So, let me just write them all out. Okay, and again, I am going to leave the question of how many there are, how many 2 silo subgroups are there. So, I have just constructed one for you. So, this is a 2 silo subgroup of S6. How many 2 silo subgroups are there and how do you determine all of them? Okay, so uh, I'd encourage you to sort of explore problems of this kind, you know, try doing it for 3 silo subgroups or 5 silo subgroups and so on for the various symmetric groups. Okay, so you'll all, you know, it's a it's a very, very interesting exercise to see what sorts of permutations should take and so on. Okay.